Okay, in this next video, we're going to take a look at that and um, how to work out the uncertainty of a gradient of a graph. Now we're going to split this sort of lesson into two parts. Okay, firstly, we'll look at trying to understand how to draw lines of extreme fit. And in the second part of the video, we'll look and try and understand how you can use these lines of extreme fit to calculate the uncertainty in a respective gradient. Now, whenever you're doing the unit two practical or either AS or A2 the unit three theory tests, uh, some of those questions you can be asked to calculate the uncertainty in the gradient of a graph. Now, prior to watching this video tutorial, make sure you look back at video tutorial 6A, 6B, in relation to how to complete a graph fully with all the associated parts and also tutorial 7 in relation to the completion of a centroid. Now, exam hint, when undertaken an A2 Unit 3 practical or again, either of those a Unit 3 theory tests for AS or A2, make sure you read through the exam question fully before completing the actual graph. And uh, that means again, maybe if a graph is on a certain page, turn over the page because there may be supplementary questions uh, that require you to uh, work out uh, constants, uncertainties and whatnot. But this will result in one of two scenarios. Number one, if the exam question does ask for the uncertainty in either the gradient or y-intercept, you must plot the centroid. You will need that centroid to do the rest of the calculation. If the question does not ask for the uncertainty in the gradient or the y-intercept, you don't need to strictly to plot the centroid. Now, obviously, by putting the centroid in there, that's going to make, of course, your line of base fit much more accurate. And of course, therefore, give you a much more accurate value for your gradient and your y-intercept. And again, that can be important in certain questions where you maybe have got a quality mark in there that perhaps your value needs to be a certain tolerance inside the mark scheme specified value. If you feel as though you're pretty quick at getting the value of X bar and Y bar, and a timing is not really an issue for completing these papers, then by all means, you should do the centroid all the time. But again, that is a choice for yourself. A timing can be an issue for both these AS and A2 papers. And you might just want to plot or pause the screen and copy down the respective notes, please. Uh, moving on then, um, look, this tutorial here will focus on the technique involved in calculating the uncertainty, both absolute and percentage in the gradient. Now we're sort of up to the stage based on our previous tutorials. You can now plot the graph, uh, you can get the sand right for the graph, you can do a well balanced line and base fit. These are terms that don't make sense to you. Uh, make sure you definitely go back and look in detail at tutorial 6B and 7. Otherwise, again, this will not make sense. We now need to go about trying to get our two lines of extreme fit, and this is the line through which the points with the maximum or max possible gradient given from the data points, and the line through the points with the minimum or min possible gradient uh, given from the data points. And we will do these really now one at a time. First of all, we're going to look at the line of max gradient, and you can see from this sort of graph on the right hand side here, we've got our line of best fit plotted. It's a solid line and make sure you label that line of best fit when you are putting in these two extreme lines. All of these extreme lines, they also must pass through the centroid. And if we're doing our max gradient in this case, effectively you're going to put your ruler on the page. The ruler must pass through that centroid and really pivot about that point. And you're going to have to rotate your ruler in an anti-clockwise direction eh, to get that max gradient. Now again, you might just want to pause the screen and copy down these respective notes before we move on. Now we need to then try and select which plotting point would give the line of max gradient. And you can really see from this graph here, it seems to me like this B point that I've shaded in green here. If I was to rotate that line of best fit, pass it through that point, okay, that's the plotting point that's going to give me the steepest possible gradient. Right? So you might just again want to copy down these additional notes and add these be supplementary notes to your existing diagram before we move on. We can now really go about drawing in that line of max gradient, which you can see in the diagram here. It passes through the centroid. It's passed through the V point that we've identified there previously. 
And again, that's going to give us the line of max gradient. Make sure even if you're drawing this line in to make it dashed, and that helps to differentiate that line from the solid line, which is used for the line of base fit. And do label it as well for the benefit of the examiner so they can tell exactly which is which in the exam. And again, you might want to pause the screen, copy down those supplementary notes, and add in a little bit of text, and of course, the line of max gradient as well. We now need to go through the exact same process uh, for getting the line of the minimum gradient. So first, again, identify which plotting point you believe if you were to plot a straight line through it on the sand ride will leave you with the minimum possible gradient given your plotting points. So again, if you just maybe want to pause the screen, I will be copying out this diagram new as well as the supplementary notes as well. Now we can go about uh, plotting that line of minimum gradient into your graph. And again, very straightforward, same sort of process as before. Again, it must go through that plotting point. It must also pass through the sand ride. It needs to be a dashed line, uh, just to differentiate it from the line of base fit. And again, make sure you label that line of gradient on your graph as well. And again, you might want to pause the screen and copy these respective notes into your diagram as well. At this stage, we have got all three lanes plotted on the graph, and we are pretty much finished the first part of this tutorial. Just a couple of things just to make sure again and stress that you have done. Bullet point number one here. Again, ensure that your lines of max and min gradient are dashed. And you can see that clearly in the diagram. It's easy when you see they're color coded here, blue and like an orangey color here in AutoCAD. But of course, you're using a pencil. And all lines, of course, will just be your standard A gray for a pencil. So dash there is super important. Hey, make sure again you label both those lines of max and min gradient, which you can see is completed in this graph as well. And then also label your line of best fit and ensure that it's a solid line, as you can see in this diagram as well. And again, you might just want to pause the screen, copy down them summary notes, and make sure again you've done them on your respective graph as well. And look, that finishes the first half of this tutorial, where we can now, of course, plot these lines of extreme fit. And in the second part of this tutorial, we'll look at how to then use that information to calculate the uncertainties in the respective gradient of a graph.